I'm Johnny, and it's time to fiddle while Alberta burns. Because you know the wildfires fiddling while Rome burns? Alberta is burning right now. You've never heard of the expression fiddling while Rome burns? And it's time for some deep dreams. Now, I don't know if you've seen what's been going on the internet recently, but Google did this whole deep dream or inception thing, and it's making psychedelic pictures all over the internet, and the internet's kind of going crazy about it. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, and I'm even going to show you some sample pictures. How does Google make these crazy, crazy pictures. Well, it has to do with their image recognition thing. And what they use are neural nets, deep neural nets in particular. Now, let's just take a quick little detour and I'll try to explain what exactly a neural net is without knowing a whole lot of my own self. A neural net is a simple brain simulator. The idea is, is that you have these little nodes everywhere and connections between all the different nodes and you take an input and an output and the input is like a picture for instance or maybe like a letter and it chugs through this network and goes all over everywhere and then on the output the computer says oh i know what that mess of pixels is it's the letter o it's a bunny or whatever Part of this whole rigmarole is not just these connections. You have to be able to train this network. You put picture of the bunny in and then the neural network out says, hey, that's a cat. And you're like, no neural network, bad. And you have to train it, which is something I don't quite understand. It involves a whole lot of math. But through this repetitive process of training and input and output and training, eventually a neural network gets to the point where it can actually recognize a bunny. What Google has done is they've kind of opened the lid up on the layers of this deep neural network. And when you do that, you can kind of see how this image gets processed in the meantime. So you have a picture coming in. And the neural network is like, oh, well, that looks kind of like a cat. Oh, well, that looks like kind of like a dog. Now, the first initial layers are all about figuring out where the contours are or the blobs of color are in a particular photo. As you go higher and higher and higher up the levels of abstraction, you see more and more features that become recognizable. And there's suspicions that our brains work like this. Bear in mind, this is modeling how brains work. So Google's thing not only does that, but it allows you to take the output of this neural network and feed it back on itself. So you really get a sense of what the network is seeing, but then you sort of bring those features out more. And so the network says, hey, I think that's a banana. And then you take that picture and you feed it back on itself. And the network's like, oh, that's looking like a banana. And then eventually you got banana. There are two really crazy things. It's not just a simple case of picture recognition. It's not like this thing is storing like thousands and thousands of pictures of dogs and cats and whatever. It's just a set of pretend neurons. There's no pictures in this thing. But somehow this crazy computer program can take a random mess of pixels and turn it into pictures of bunnies and dogs and buildings and cars. The second crazy thing is the pictures that deep dreams can generate are like astoundingly weird and it really raises a lot of questions about creativity and how easy is it for a set of neurons to create something i'm going to show you pictures of my studio that i ran through this process now who is it that's creating the pictures is it shell who took the pictures is it me who's running it through the networks is it the people who train the networks in the first place it's a really good question and remember kids Deep dreaming is fun.